coach, you're up against a side that is not easy to break down and they're playing at home. What was your team talk like following yesterday's defeat? Uh, we have to stay afloat. We have to stay afloat. You're in the ocean. We have to swim. We have to put our heads up until we reach the shores. Yeah, um, playing at the home team, uh, we tag ourselves as the underdogs and I believe the underdogs usually causes the biggest upset. Yeah. And what's the ideal plan in preventing the side from the three pointers, which seems to be their strengths? Yeah, we are going to work on our defense, we are going to work on the rotation, and we are going to work on the three R's on the D. So that is reading, reacting, and rotating. So we are going to put pressure on the ball. Uh, the principle on our defense is to communicate, dictate, and attack. So we are going to emphasize on those three principles every time on the floor. Yeah. Yesterday it was a low-scoring uh, day for your side, only 43 points. Was that an area of concern and something that you talked about? Yeah, so much, so much. Uh, KPA team, um, we are used to go above the 40 points. But for yesterday, uh, we just have to keep that game behind our back and we focus on today's game. And I believe we are going to uh, give a good account of ourselves. but still no win. Would you say that consistency is a bit of a challenge for your side? Yeah, because today we started on well. Uh, just didn't go our way, but we started on well. You know. And uh, where do you think uh, Cape Town uh, Tigers dominated to take the lead from the second quarter? Uh, I think they dominated on the three-point line. They took us out on the three-point line. Then um, in the third quarter, we kind of slumped. That's the problem. That's where the problem came from. Considering that the two teams that beat you, you gave them a run for their money, yeah. is that a positive to take away from this competition? Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Most definitely. All right. Hard luck. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay. KPA dropped a game against Cape Town Tigers. This game ended 96-72. So let's just talk about this. So uh, heading into this game, I honestly... I didn't have any expectations of KPA winning this game. I knew Cape Town Tigers are just going to go right at them. And given the f way Cape Town Tigers have been playing, considering the fact that Cape Town Tigers have been in the BL last season, so they already know the level of physicality and the level of play style that they need to so that they can get to that level. Uh, KPA were not aware of uh, that situation. They were not aware of what is to come. And Cape Town Tigers mentally had the edge against KPA. KPA can say they were coming in as the underdogs. The the closest they've been to the to the BL into the BL was in twenty nineteen. They're not able to, you know, punch their ticket, you know, what happened. I made a video addressing it. But looking at this game, the way Cape Town Tigers brutally beat the NBA Academy team yesterday, I knew Kenya Ports Authority weren't going to stand a chance easily. But I saw this game the the KPA team, they held up well. But it was not enough, especially in the second, because at the first you could see the game. Uh, at the end of the first, you could see it was just like uh, it was just a seesaw battle. Both teams, it was a slugfest. Both teams were you know trading blows, but when it came to the second second half, man, the KPS I just capitulated, and it goes to show you like the way teams uh, start is the way is the same energy that you're supposed to carry on. Throughout the whole game, and KPA just lacked that. Uh, they just they just didn't have it. They just didn't have the ability to be able to start the game on a high note and finish the game on a high note. And when they slacked a bit, especially in the second half, all their offen offense, the offensive players just disappeared. All their offense, their defense, no one was playing uh, team basketball. They're just you know short chucking, and it was it, it, it was just a sad state of affairs. And when I watched this game, it was just um, it was just pretty hard to watch because looking at statistically, I mean, we got our rebounded. KPA got our rebounded uh, 49, KPA 43. Cape Town Tigers were very active on the boards. And this was the same thing even against the Euro 90 game. You could see KPA not even active on the boards. You could just see a situation where a ball has been thrown, it ricochets on the rim, uh, in this case, a Cape Town Tigers player comes in, takes the takes the offensive ball, kicks it out, an open three. If they misses, they grab it again, try to try to do a putback. Uh, I saw a putback in that game, and it was it was just sad because the defense was just lacking. There there was no like communication, especially on defense, and 
really really shut us out and Cape Town Tigers they shot pretty well especially on two point field goals you can see 51 percent on two point field goals overall field goal percentage was 44 percent KPA 36 I mean it was not a good look especially for KPA on two point field goals we are not able to have the ability to convert especially under the rim and this goes to show you like our finishing was not the best and it was pretty sad and from the three it was shot decently 30 37 percent from deep although it was near league average but near competition average but looking at the way uh kpo are just you know checking those threes at some point you could see the you know they were checking a lot of threes and now going in and they're not trying to adjust to even get inside to make that shot so if your shot outside shot is not working they're supposed to find a way to work the ball inside and not able to work, find a way to work the ball inside but in the free throw line both teams shot at a similar rate 60 percent apiece and it was crazy because when i look at, when i looked at um uh, this game closely you could see on turnovers uh the kps had really turned over the ball a lot there's 20 turnovers uh 11 steals on the other side for cape town tigers 21 assists they really dished out the rock pretty well on blocks you could see cape town tigers really uh did their thing in there and they racked up four blocks and KPA, if you're leading in fouls and turnovers, there's no way you're going to win that ball game easily. Points from turnovers, Cape Town Tigers dominated 29, uh, 28 fast break points for Cape Town Tigers, second chance points 15, points in the paint 22, points from the bench, you can see 15, but they're able to, um, they're able to like utilize their bench perfectly. But on the first quarter, you could see KPA on top, like literally, you, I just had that feeling like, uh, this game, if KPL are going to win it, it was going to be very close. But when I looked at the second quarter, at the end of the first half, you could see this game ended uh, on a three-point spread. It was 41-38. And looking at the way uh, KPL started off the second half in the third quarter, you could see there was just lackadaisical. There was no uh, consistent offense. There was no uh, strategy when it came to scoring the basketball. I don't know what happened in the second because heads just dropped. Everyone just dropped. All the players that were scoring points, even George Williams, the guy who was scoring the most points abundantly in the first, went absolutely absent in the second. Even the post players were not getting the rock the, the way they used to. And it, it, it all went downhill as KPA, especially in the fourth quarter. KPA just had that scoring slump for... The, for half of the fourth quarter and they're not able to do anything and the biggest lead by Cape Town Tigers was 24 the biggest run by CTT was um, 11 only one lead change and Cape Town Tigers basically just dominated this game for 23 total minutes so uh, honestly if you look at it I mean KPO are just not ready I mean we had we had our usual suspects called Dennis Koja. Seventeen minutes played, eleven points, six rebounds. He had four personal fouls, um, plus minus or minus twenty six. He actually had the largest negative plus minus. Uh, he showed up with two blocks, which was pretty pretty good. George Williams he played heavy minutes. This guy only rested for three minutes. Thirty seven minutes played, twenty four points, thirty three percent shooting from the field, six of eighteen shooting from the field. 3 of 13 on 2-point field goals. This man was not able to convert, especially on 2-point field goals, and really hurt our offense. And 3 of 5 from deep, or 60%. 8 rebounds. He had 1 assist, 4 turnovers, 1 steal. Those turnovers are really costly. Ken Oshira also had 4 turnovers, 2 personal fouls. Ken Oshira played 23 total minutes, 9 points, 25% shooting. 3 of 12, very... I mean, it was just, a, it was just horrendous. 105 on two point field goals, two of seven from deep. I mean, the worst. I mean, one for one from the line. But give give credit to George Williams because, man, this guy, 69% from the free throw line, nine of 13. He was the guy who went to the line most of the time. And at least he was able to convert them. But Ken Washira, he had a plus minus for minus 20, uh, five rebounds, one assist. I mean, three steals. Those three steals were pretty good. I mean, it it was just sad. Only only two players who were, who showed up on the score on the scores, and they scored ten points or more. Dennis O'Dell, George Williams, Ken O'Shea was one point shy from ten points. I mean, it was 
Then I, we have Eugene Roderick. He also played heavy minutes. 23 minutes, played 7 points, 37% shooting from the field. On 2-point field goals, 33%. Um, 50% from deep. He didn't go to the line. He didn't even draw fouls. And this is the guard that he's supposed to draw fouls. Where are the guards at? The guards are supposed to at least uh, attack, draw fouls, go to the line. I didn't see this guy go to the line. He, was, he, he played off the bench and um, it wasn't a good look. Three rebounds, one personal foul, two turnovers, two steals, personals, minus 11. I mean, Anthony Kidongo was absent this game. 18 minutes played, two points, one of two shooting. I mean, seven rebounds. This man was basically Dennis Rodman in this game. Four personal fouls, one turnover, one steal. I mean, Sito Makamba also absent. I mean, you, you, the guys were supposed, who were supposed to score, they weren't scoring. And... 12 minutes played, 3 points, 0 for 2 from... He He, he never even made, like, a field goal. He only had two attempts on the field goal, didn't go in. Uh, he 3 or 4 from the line, 75%. He actually led in free throws, and uh, that's not... He led, but he didn't go to the line a lot. Got Lennox, Wanje, 1 minute, one minute that he won. He wasn't given any minutes. He wasn't able to, you know, put up the... He wasn't able to pull down the points or, or anything. Then got Widgers. I mean, he fouled out. He actually racked out five personal fouls. Nine minutes played, 0 for 2. Didn't make a free field goal. Only, out of two field goal attempts, this man didn't make any. And one turnover, one assist. I mean, it was just a coming out game. But looking at the way KPA just played, it was just horrendous. I mean, the shooting 36% from the field, not acceptable at all. It's supposed to shoot at least 47 to 48, especially in such a contest. But if you look at the uh, the main guy, for the main guys for Cape Town Tigers, you've got Evans Ganapamo, 35 minutes plays. This man only rested for five minutes. 20 points, 46% shooting from the field, 45% on two-point field goals, 50% from deep, and 100% from the line. I mean... This man was just absolutely, you know, on an absolute tear. Five assists, three rebound, rebounds. He struggled with three personal fouls, one turnover. He had two steals, a block. It was pretty good. Actually, actually, this guy, man, played pretty well. We had three players scoring 18 points or more. You've got Michael, Michael, 36 minutes played, 19 points, 6 of 11 shooting from the field, 54 54%. Uh, 60% on two-point field goals, 50% from deep, and 66% from the line. He uh, is one rebound shy from a double-double. I mean, Michael is just doing everything in there. And he had three rebounds. He had nine, nine, he had nine rebounds, three assists, two personal fouls, one turnover, one steal. Then you have Rafael Putney. I mean, this man was just, on, just, he was just tearing, us, tearing us apart. I mean, this man was doing everything. 30 minutes played, eight, 8 points, 18 points. This man had 18 points, 42% shooting from the field, 50%, 57% shooting from 2.4 goals on 7 attempts. He made 4, 2 of 7 from deep. I mean, he was pretty abysmal from deep, but looking at the, the way he was running fouls and going to the line, 4 of 11, 36%. He was also also on the double-double category. He was one rebound shy from a double-double. He had 9 rebounds. Three assists, four personal fouls, three turnovers, four steals, two blocks. This man was everywhere on the stat sheet. And I mean KPA, man, I just feel like it's it for it's it for KPA and I don't think I don't think uh the the BL dreams uh for this season are going to go into fruition because losing two games in a row like that, even if you win against the NBA Africa I mean, you have to win at least two games, and right now it just seems bleak. And um, well, all all roads head back to Nairobi just to complete, just to continue with KBF because uh, you cannot um, you cannot explain not being able to turn up for the road to the BAL. Uh, uh, I mean, you have to turn up. It's ma- it's mandatory. It's necessary for a team to turn up, and KPF are not able to do that. And it is actually pretty disappointing to see a team that has so much potential not able to like get the coaching staff, get the get the right people in there so that they can be able to like match the level intensity of the tournament. So unfortunately, uh, it's just going to be um, 
it's, it's just going to be a rough uh, season, especially all that work that KP have built, all that, you know, effort. They have to make it back to the finals again so that it can go back. So it's just climbing the mountain and just descending so far. So you have to climb the mountain again. So, I mean, it's it's sad. Getting the right players to match the tournament is very necessary. Getting uh, the right uh, technical bench to tell uh, the coach what they need to do so that they can prepare for Cape Town Tigers. Even I, I, I tweeted, I'm pretty sure Cape Town Tigers studied KPA film in depth and they're able to know like what, what what weaknesses they could exploit and they did exploit them. KPA were very laxadaisical on defense, on offense, it was pretty stagnant. They're only relying on George Williams to create an offense. When he shoots, he shoots and he chucks up a shot, uh, the other team gets the rebound, easy transition points. Uh, KPA not even to know, able to knock down the three ball. They're not able to knock down the three ball down the stretch. I'm not talking about the whole game, but in the second half, you could see the lead ballooned as Cape Town Tigers able to like shoot the ball pretty well, especially from deep. Even the putbacks, the transition points, mainly came in the second half. And even going to the line to shoot, drawing fouls, in the second half, and KPA just capitulated, especially in the third quarter. They got outscored by 11 points, and it was 34 Cape Town Tigers, 23 KPA, and it was, I just knew it was a coming out party. As I saw, like, the way the heads dropped in the fourth, 11 points for KPA, 21 points for Cape Town Tigers, I knew Cape Town Tigers are going to win this game, even if the game was going to be very close. They were going to win it regardless, because... I mean, it's, it's it was just granted. I just knew it from the start when I mentioned it. Uh, I mean, it, it's just depressing. I just knew. I just knew like this was just going to happen because we can start off hot on a on a hot mean streak, but not having the energy and ability to finish the game, it's really wanting. And um, yeah, I mean that's all I gotta say about that. I'm just I'm just disappointed in the KPI side. All that hard work trying to get in that position and it just fail like that it's just pretty disappointing i mean um yeah so um if you guys like the video make sure you drop a like drop a comment especially just talk about uh this whole situation and um i'm out peace